Hi folks, so in this video I'm going to continue working on the snake game that I was developing in Python and specifically I'm going to focus on creating food, uh, showing it on the screen and then having the snake uh, essentially eat the food and then get longer. So I'm going to jump straight in. To store the food's location I'm going to use a list again as I have been for the snake. So I'm going to have to define some extra game variables. I'm going to create one for the food which is going to be a list with x and y coordinates. So I'm going to set it as 0, 0 for now. I'm just creating an empty list. But as I generate the food through the game cycle, I will assign an x and a y coordinate to that food position, and then I can draw it accordingly. Uh, next variable I'm going to define is new food equals true. And so what I'm going to use this variable for is a condition that as long as this is true, I'm going to generate a new piece of food uh, once that's been generated, I'm going to set that variable to false so it doesn't just keep creating food until the snake has actually eaten it. And then the next variable I need to define is a new piece. And this again is going to be a list with a 0 and a 0 for x and y. And this is going to be the new piece of the snake once it's eaten that food. And now I'm just going to get straight into creating the food. I'm going to come down here into my main game loop and Add a little note for it, create food. So this is where the first variable comes in. If new food is true, uh, that means that I want to run through the cycle and I want to generate a new food. So first of all, I'm going to set new food to false. So I don't want to just keep making additional foods or keep recreating this one. Now I'll go back to my original list that I created here, food, and I'm going to give it an X and a Y coordinate. So food x, which is the first variable, 0, is going to be a randomly generated position. So before I can do that, I need to import another module. And that module is random. So I'll come up here, import random. And that's going to allow me to generate random numbers. So I'll start with the random.randint function. So it's going to generate a random integer. The range is going to go from 0 all the way across the screen width. But I want to convert that screen width into my individual cells. So I'll divide that by cell size. And because I don't want this to be able to generate right on the very edge of the screen, because then it's going to go off the screen and not going to be visible, I'll add a minus 1 to it to cap the maximum that it can be. So that's going to give me a cell size. I now want to convert this back into a pixel. So cell size multiplied by this value is going to give me uh, an x coordinate for the food. I just copy this down and I replace this with 1 for my y coordinate and replace this with screen height. Now that I've generated the new food and I've given it an x and a y coordinate, all that's left to do is draw it. I'll add a comment here, draw food, and I'm just going to use Python's, or rather Pygame's draw.rec function. I'll feed in screen as my usual display window and then I need to define a new color. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say food color is 250 50. So with the color defined I can put that in here. Food color. And now this bit's easy. I just need to give it a, an x and a y start position. That's going to be my food 0 which is my x food 1, which is my y, and then a width and a height. And both of those are cell size. Now I just want to check, uh, run the game, just check that there's no errors. Okay, and there we go. So it's generated a randomly positioned food on this grid. Now while that's creating the food, it isn't actually giving any option for the snake to interact with it. So at the moment, the snake would simply pass through that food. The next thing I'm going to code is essentially a collision detection between the snake's head and the food. So I can come in here and say check if food has been eaten. And the benefit of having this stored as a list means that the comparison is fairly straightforward. I can say that if my snake position at uh, index 0, which is always the head of the snake, if that equals the list of food, which is the coordinates of the food, then that must mean that the snake has just come in contact with it and therefore it's eating it. 
So now I can continue uh, and reset my variables. So the snake has eaten that food, I need to generate a new one, which is where I set new food back to true. So on the next iteration, it's going to generate another one. And now I want to create a new segment for the snake. So create a new piece at the last point of the snake's tail. Essentially, that's what's happening, right? The snake is growing by one. So I'll go back to that variable I created before, which was new piece. And I'm going to set this new piece, or rather, I'm going to create a list from the last point, so the very last segment of the snake, so the, the tail position, which is minus one in a list index. So this always gives you the last point on your list. And now all I need to do is adjust the X and Y coordinate of new piece, depending on which direction the snake is going in. I can add that in here. If direction equals one, so if the snake was moving up when this was happening, then the X coordinate of the new segment isn't going to change. It's the Y coordinate of the new segment is going to change. And that's just going to increase by the width of the cell, which is my cell size variable. All I need to do then is say new piece, uh, one, which is the Y coordinate. And I need to increase it by cell size. Now I just copy that down for direction three. So if the snake is moving down the way when it eats the food, well, it's just the Y coordinate changes by cell size. And now I just copy this down again. And I can set if direction is two. So now it's the X coordinate that's gonna be changing. And that's going to be a minus cell size because the snake's moving to the right. Therefore, I need to create a new piece to the left of the tail. And finally, if direction is four, then the X coordinate is increased by cell size. And finally, now that I've created this new piece, uh, all I need to do is attach new piece to the end of the snake. Uh, and this is where that append function comes in useful again. So snake pause dot append new piece. Okay, so that was a bit of typing. I'm just gonna run it in case there's any errors along the way. Seems to run okay. I'll try and eat this food now. I'm not doing a very good job. Uh, oh, I made a typo there, snake pause. So I'll run again. And this is the thing you don't really, with Python, you don't see an error until it actually tries to execute that line of code. There we go, it's working a lot better now. So. As soon as I eat the food, it not only generates a new piece of food, it also extends the length of the snake by one point. There you go. So that's working as intended. The last thing then that I wanna add is some kind of score counter. So I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna generate another variable. That's gonna be score equals zero. So the game starts at nothing. And then I'll come down. So every time we the, the snake eats, food, I'm going to increase score. So score is increased by one. For this to actually display on the screen, I'm going to generate or uh, create a new function. I'll call this define draw score. And with Pygame, uh, to generate text on the screen, you have to convert it to uh, an image first. So I'll generate the text. So my score text is going to be score space plus the string of the score variable. And I need to convert this into an image. Before I can convert that to an image, I have to define the, the font that I'm going to be using for it. I'll come up here and I'll have a section for defining the font. And I'll say font equals, and this is just another Pygame function, font.sysfont. I'm just going to, I'm not actually going to set it to anything, none, and I'm given a size of 40 pixels, or a size of 40. Then I come back down into my draw score function, 
and now I can convert that into an image. Score image equals font.render my score text and I need to also give this a color. So I'm going to come up here and I'll go with a blue. 255, so put blue in there. And finally to actually show this on the screen I use the blit function. So I call up my screen first, which is my display, screen.blit, my score image, and I'm going to just give it an x and y coordinate of 0, 0, so that it's in the top left. And now I can call that function down here, draw score. So just to run this now, uh, so you can see it's coming up with a 0, and then every time I eat any piece of food, it goes up by 1. So that's everything for this video. The only bits remaining now are to add in some collision so that the snake can't go off the screen. Uh, and also if the snake eats itself, there's some kind of game over. And once there is a game over, I want to give the player the option to reset and start trying a new game. So I'm going to leave that for another video. Uh, for now, I'm just going to wrap this up here. And I hope that was useful. And thanks for watching.